Friends, welcome to our West Los Angeles United Methodist Church's online worship. Thank you for joining us. Uh, well, today is June 16th and it is Father's Day. So we do wish everyone a happy Father's Day as we give God thanks for fathers and father figures in our lives, both past and present. I, I hope this day is a wonderful day for all as we remember fathers and show our appreciation and love for the blessings that they have been to our lives. Friends, there are a lot of events coming up, so please be sure to see all of the announcement slides at the end of our online worship today. We'd love to have you join us for programs and activities of our church. Okay, let us begin worship. Please join me in the responsive call to worship. I heard my name echoed in the canyons. I heard my name whispered on the wind. I have been called by God. I am beckoned by grace. I am held in love. I am nurtured in faith. I have a message to share. I have good news to tell. I lift my voice in thanks and prayer. I raise my voice in song and praise. Let us pray. Into your presence we come, O God, gathered together in worship, seeking the blessings of your grace, hoping for the renewal of our spirits, desiring to be vessels of your love to the world. Holy Parent, as we gather in this place, enable this hour to be a witness of our faith and a great celebration of your truth. We give you thanks for the newness of this day. In the one whom you sent as our Redeemer, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.
Good morning. Welcome to our children's message time. Knock, 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 knock. Who's there? Teddy. Teddy who? Teddy is Father's Day. Oh, 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 oh. Here's another one. What did the baby computer say to its dad on Father's Day? Happy Father's Day, Dada. And one more. A little child was in church for the first time as, and he watched as the ushers passed the offering plates. When they neared the pew where he sat, the young child could be heard whispering loudly so that everyone else heard, Don't pay for me, Daddy. I'm under five. Got it, son, said the dad. Okay, all jokes aside, happy Father's Day to all the dads and father figures in our lives, uncles, grandfathers, or family friends who we have a special relationship with. As we did with mother and mother figures last month, today we pause to reflect upon, to honor, and to celebrate and remember our fathers past and present. Now dads are many things and they do many things. They are providers, they teach us how to ride a bike, they coach our sports team, help us with our homework, cook meals, play with us, read us books, drive us places, wash our clothes, and so much more. I have heard a father described as a superhero. They have many gifts that they share to help us grow and to learn new things. What is your dad good at? Some are good at sports or are really good listeners. Maybe they are a whiz at math and can help you with your homework. Or maybe you've noticed how kind they are to others. How would you finish this sentence? My father is a superhero because he is good at... Be sure you tell your dad today. We know our dads and other father figures are always there for us. They're hard workers, brave and devoted, and they always protect us. Let me show you what I mean. I have this balloon, and that's to represent you. And if you notice, it says a father's love, and that is a father's love protects us. And I'm gonna use this pin to represent danger. So watch this example of how a father's love protects us. Just like the father figures in our lives, God is a loving parent. God is compassionate and forgiving. God teaches us how to be a good person. God loves us and wants the best for us. Just as our earthly fathers show love, compassion, and care for their children, God shows boundless love and mercy towards each of us too. Let us pray. Dear God, as we pause on this Father's Day to celebrate and to remember and to say thank you to our fathers and father figures in our lives, we also say thanks to you, God, for your care, guidance, and watching over us each day. Amen.
faith was tested, I needed proof. I called upon you to find the truth. I couldn't see the beauty like I used to. But then I saw. Hear now the word of God from the New Testament epistle of James, chapter 2, verses 14 through 17. What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if someone claims to have faith but does not have works? Surely that faith cannot save, can it? If a brother or sister is naked and lacks daily food, and one of you says to them, Go in peace, keep warm, and eat your fill. And yet, you do not supply their bodily needs. What is the good of that? So faith by itself, if it has no works, is dead. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Friends, Two men die. One of the men dies of reckless driving and the other from old age. And both men find themselves standing at the gates of heaven. St. Peter is there standing in front of the gate at a a reception podium ready to welcome them. St. Peter says to the first man, what is your name and what did you accomplish during your life? The first man responds, Yo, St. Peter, you know me. I'm Joe Viducci. I've been a New York City taxi driver for about 17 years. Yeah. St. Peter looks up his name in the registration book and says, Oh, yes, very well. Here is your silk robe and your golden scepter. Now enter the kingdom of heaven after which a chorus of trumpet sounds is heard. Then the pearly gates open wide and the taxi driver struts his way through the entry. The second man is witnessing all of this as he is waiting his turn 
wide-eyed with exuberant expectation and excitement. St. Peter calls him forward, saying, And what is your name, and what have you accomplished in your life? Quite proudly, the man says, Oh, surely you know me, St. Peter. My fa I'm Father O'Flanagan from St. Mary's Cathedral. I've been devoting my life to our Lord for 62 years. Very well, says St. Peter, finding the name of Father O'Flanagan in his book of names. Here is your cotton robe and your wooden staff. Now you may enter the kingdom of heaven. And the gates open just enough for Father O'Flanagan to squeeze through. But Father O'Flanagan hesitates in disappointment and says to St. Peter, Wait, 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 St. Peter. Are you meaning to tell me that the reckless New York cab driver gets a silk robe and golden scepter and all you be given me is a cotton robe and a wooden staff? What in Mother Mary's name is going on here, St. Peter? Did you run out of silk robes and golden scepters or something? St. Peter replies, well, here in heaven, we evaluate a person's life on a performance scale. Let me see now. Yes, here you are. Our records show that whenever anyone came into the cathedral for worship to hear you preach, they, oh, oh it says here they fell asleep. Then St. Peter flips back to the taxi driver's record and says, and here it says that whenever anyone got into this cab driver's taxi, they, they began to pray. <laughs> now clearly, friends, you have, may have more sympathy for our priest in the story, and perhaps you may have even felt moved to prayer. Pr you may have felt moved to prayer as you put your life in the danger by stepping into a New York City cab. <laughs> and certainly we might indeed question the reality of such an outcome of heavenly reward. But the comedic skit does lift up the scriptural theme for today, which comes to us from the letter of James, chapter 2, verses 14 through 17, which reads, What good is it? my brothers and sisters. If you say you have faith, but do not have works, can faith save you? If a brother or sister is naked and lacks daily food, and one of you says to them, go in peace, keep warm and eat your fill, and yet you do not supply their bodily needs, what is the good of that? So faith by itself if it has no works, is dead. Friends, without a doubt, it is clear that the scripture from the book of James challenges us to do good works. For faith, it says, without works is dead. It reminds us that we need to do more for God than simply pay God lip service. For confessing Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior will sound like vain and insincere words if our living does not reflect our believing. Now, I don't really know what our entry into heaven will really be like. This image of St. Peter standing at some heavenly gate with some holy book of names to search through in order to confirm our entry into heaven <laughs> It's been a long-standing concept of popular imagination. Even so, if this was reality of what happens to us upon our death, and we do come before some kind of evaluation and judgment of our lives, who better to have at that gate of entry than the disciple Peter, who uh, knew better than most of us about the grace of God in Jesus Christ, for as you will remember, Peter tried so hard to be devoted to Jesus, but Peter himself denied knowing Jesus three times, and yet he was forgiven, right? Perhaps Peter is the one you want standing at the pearly gates, someone who understands what it means to fail 
and to be flawed. But it wasn't just Peter who at times disappointed Jesus. It was the other disciples as well. Time and time again, Jesus was disappointed with his disciples because they believed in him, followed him, and yet they would do things like turn the children away, the widow, the hungry, the physically ill or impaired when they came to them in their need. Yet time and time again in scripture, Jesus would praise the doers of faith as the more worthy example of faithfulness. Like the parable of the Good Samaritan who cared for the robbed, beaten, and injured traveler on the road from Jerusalem to Jericho. Or the widow who gave the greatest sacrificial giving to the support of the temple. Remember so many others who took what they felt in their hearts and minds and transposed them into faithful living which contributed to redemptive possibilities for others. Jesus understood what we were capable of in spite of the fact that he understood we weren't perfect. Now I realize our scripture passage this morning might feel dramatically opposite to the Apostle Paul's words found in his letter to the church in Rome and Galatia, which tells us that we are not deemed righteous by works, but by faith. Paul's words are quite a contradiction, it may seem. But in my estimation, these passages are not in conflict. Together, they represent the great need to keep in balance and in check these two vitally important endeavors of the human spirit. One, to find truth, to believe in that which defines the universe and everything created, the thing that makes sense of life. And two, to live out that truth and belief and engage in activity and works that participates in that great plan for all of life. Belief and action, they are not exclusive of one another or at odds with one another. Both are necessary to our living as God, I believe, intends us to live. As a pastor, it is one of the hardest tasks to try to be a, um, try to be part of moving pew sitters into active doers. And certainly we pastors ourselves must be willing to be examples of what we pro profess to preach and be doers as well and not just professors of the word as as um, as well. But hopefully we realize that a part of that motivation is allow God's Spirit to dwell in us and guide and motivate us individually and collectively as the church, as a community, as a nation and world. Our personal and communal faith is a vital part of that. The world is not changed by people who sit back and only take but do not give. The world is not transformed by those who remain silent or stand idle by or immobilized by fear. God's light does not shine in fullness without the help of you and me being a vessel and a vehicle of that light. Great and wonderful things happen when we rise to the occasion, meet the challenges before us, and confront them with acts of compassion and justice and hope. This scripture this morning challenges us all to consider how we live out our faith. What will we accomplish in this life? There are infinite number of possibilities before us. Our faith can be active though through this church's ministry and in every other aspect of your living, family, work, community, nation, and world. You make a difference. We make a difference. The faith that is in us will be most revealed and known to others through our actions and our words. This is what the writer of the letter of James expresses, that faith 
without works is dead. It's where the rubber meets the road. Amen. Amen. Friends, let us pray. Calling and compassionate God, we confess that we often profess our faith in you and in Jesus Christ, whom you have sent to show us the way. We give you praise and thanksgiving, but we often fall short of living the life that you call us to through our words and our actions. How easy it is to disconnect faith from works, and yet these both are so important if we are to live as true disciples in the world. So gracious God, please open our eyes that we may see ourselves clearly. Remind us when our actions fall short of your hope and your desire for us. Please, O oh God, strengthen us to be vessels of your goodness in the world so that your love and grace flow from us to wherever and whomever your love and grace is needed. Gracious God, all this we pray in Christ our Savior. Amen. Let us join together in the prayer that Christ taught us by saying, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, hear now these words of benediction. Merciful God, send us forth with your blessing. Give us the strength to carry our faith out into the world, blessing others through our words and actions. And may God's grace in Jesus Christ and God's Holy Spirit guide and uphold you always. Amen. Happy Father's Day, everyone. Take care. <music>